emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to part five. Yes, five of our build of the TACOM 135th Panard AML90 light armored vehicle, which we're, if you remember, we're doing as a Warhammer 40K Imperial Skitter light reconnaissance vehicle for emodels.co.uk, uh, my channel sponsors, uh, and who have provided this kit for me to play with. So yes, we are taking this, we're taking the AML90, a really beautiful little TACOM kit, lots of little fine delicate at parts and we warhammered it up by effectively kit bashing it which is effectively just gluing warhammer stuff on it so if you remember we've replaced the the hatch covers with those from uh, uh warhammer vehicles we replaced the aerials and all the bedding rolls and stuff we've stuck a fuel tank on the back from the tank kit we've put a heavy stubber on the front here with the world's biggest searchlight which will probably make it impractical but there you go uh, we've replaced the 90 mil gun on the front of the AML 90 with these twin linked auto cannons, which fit perfectly. And of course, and of course, not to be ignored, the honking great dozer blade on the front. Yes, we've put a big massive bulldozer blade on the front because of course we have. And the plan was give it a matte varnish because we need to do matte varnish for some of the pigment effects and then do that. However, although yesterday was a beautifully sunny day with the blackbirds singing and the window open and the happiness and the sunshine and the going outside without a jacket, today it's hoofing it down outside. It's rain and cold and damp. And I use Humbrol Rattle Can Matte 49 acrylic varnish because I can't do the matte varnishing. So I had a choice. I could either sit here and play Elite Dangerous all day, which let's be honest, that's what I'd kind of like to do right now. But I decided, nope, not going to do that. Not going to do that because that's that's silly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to one side until the weather is better and we can continue. What we're going to do today is get all the figures done. Now, if you remember, we're going to do this in a diorama. So I've got a whole mess of dudes. These are Warhammer uh, Imperial Guard dudes from a set that I've forgotten. Might be the command set. I can't remember. Anyway, it's a bunch of dudes. Warhammer dudes and if you remember these aren't realistic scales they're all kind of like stylized figures but they're kind of not quite 135th scale but when you put them with this vehicle which is 135th and has no nothing on it to tell you how big it actually is there's nothing that gives away the scale on here apart from perhaps the size of the hatch or the door uh, I did some checks and these work perfectly with that vehicle they look about the right size and they're kind of sort of 135th, maybe 137th scale, but obviously not realistically proportioned. It kind of works. So we're going to use these figures. So this episode today, hopefully, won't be a long episode, I don't think. What I'm going to show you is how to get figures painted up uh, quickly and easily, especially when you've got to paint multiple of them. Remember, I'm kind of aiming this at the beginner, not at the most intense uh you know gallery quality museum quality paint job ever so we're going to go for a quick and easy way to paint figures so they look interesting and good especially if you're playing them on a tabletop this is of course going to be a display model so it doesn't really matter uh, we're not going to be worrying about that but i'm going to take you to that level so what do we need well of course we need our dudes uh, now if you notice on here these are simply um bottle corks wine bottle corks i got a bag full of them off amazon or off ebay even cost me a few quid when you're painting figures uh if they're miniature figures that come with a for tabletop miniature games they usually have a base as well so you can always just glue the base to them and then paint them uh but we're going to be putting them in a diorama so we didn't want to attach the base so all i've done is i've drilled a hole in the bottom of the leg there up maybe a centimeter or so got a, a bit of cocktail stick and pushed that into the hole and glued it in place with white pva glue elmer's glue for those of our colonial cousins in the us Uh, and then just basically taking the pointed end and jammed it into the cork. This gives me something to hold on to while I'm painting. So A, I can brace my hands like that for fine detail painting and get close up. Also, it means I can get all around the model, but I'm not actually having to hold the model while I'm painting it, because that's the worst thing you can do. We're using water-based acrylic paints and they do rub off easily. So the last thing you want to do is be touching the figure and handling it while you're trying to paint it. So if you can mount them to either the stands, 
that come with them if you're using tabletop miniatures use some pva glue and glue them on so that when you're done you can just pop the base off again uh, or just like this jam them in a piece of cork what else do we need well obviously we're going to need some paints and for this build i'm using primarily uh, the vallejo game color range of paints now, i've got quite a few of them we're also going to be using some of their standard uh, modeling paints these are just the model color range a big difference is that the model colors have been around for a long time uh, the game colours tend to have a bit more dense pigmentation and more intense colours. They're designed a little bit more for sort of tabletop miniature painting. Uh, they're primarily aimed at being a replacement for the Citadel range of paints. They're all very similar colours with different names. There's a lot of very similar colours so you can easily swap between the Citadel range and the uh, game colour range. We also have uh, an ink and a wash. We have the game ink which is the game colour ink uh, of black. And we have a wash, which is their Game Color Wash Sepia Shade. These are basically replacements for Null Noil and Agrax Earthshade, if you remember your Citadel paints. Uh, we're not using Citadel paints with these because, unfortunately, at the moment, e-models don't stock Citadel stuff and Warhammer stuff. Um, but stay tuned, you never know. But they do stock the Vallejo stuff, and the Vallejo stuff is really, really good. So get these. The advantage of these is it's a dropper bottle. Yeah, take note, Citadel. So we've got those. We've also got some ammo by MIG paints as well. We might use one or two of these, but I'll, I'll hollow these out as we use them if we do. Uh, what else do we need? We need some good brushes. Uh, there's going to be lots of fine detail work to do here with these figures. So I'm going to be using my, my collection of Army Painter Wargamer brushes. These are really, really nice brushes. You can get them in a big mega pack called the Mega Pack. Uh, or you can, there's a big selection of different sizes, the dry brushes and detail brushes. I've got quite a few of these, so I'm going to be using these pretty much. Although I may occasionally break out my Windsor & Newton Series 7s, my super expensive, proper grown-up brushes. Uh, do go and check out on eModel's website, they do sell the Army Painter brushes. Uh, just look under the brushes section, paints and brushes, it'll be in there. But go and check them out. It's always worth having good brushes because 95% of the time, one of the things that stops you doing a good paint job is using crappy brushes. So good brushes will do you a lot of favours when it comes to painting, especially figures, because figures demand a lot of, not necessarily accuracy, but delicate work. Now, one other thing we're going to use, uh, and this is something familiar if you see my other videos, is a wet palette. Now, you can go out and buy one if you want, or you could just make your own. Uh, a wet palette is designed so that when you put paint on here, water-based acrylic paint, it will stay moister and workable for longer. Uh, the one thing about these game colour paints is they do dry out very quickly on the palette if you're using a plastic or a palette or a, a tile, a kitchen tile or something, or a glass plate or anything that's solid and not porous. These will dry out on the palette really quick and you'll use a lot of paint up. A wet palette keeps the paint moist and you can work it for longer. And if you make a special mix of colours, it can often last for days. You'd have to go back and make the mix again. How do you make a wet palette? I'll put the link up here. I did do a video on what it is and how to use it. If YouTube lets me do it, I'll put it here. So if you can, especially if you're doing figures, get yourself a wet palette. If you're using water-based acrylic paint, you want a wet palette. Trust me, it'll you'll use a lot less paint and you'll get more control over your paint. So let's get started. Now you notice these already are assembled and have a colour on them. Um, for the sake of speed, what I've done is I've already assembled them in some sub-assemblies here. Uh, when you're painting figures, ideally, you want to try and keep the arms off if you can, uh, because it makes painting easier. But in the case of this sniper, he's got a cloak that was two parts. So I had to I had to assemble that anyway, so I had no choice. But like this guy here with the Vox caster, I've left his arm off there because it goes up to his head and it just stops it getting in the way. I did glue his arm on with the bandage, but that because the, the sling goes around the back of his head, so I needed to glue that on. The guy with the heavy weapon, I've not glued his arm on because the weapon will be here and will get in the way. So where you can, go sub-assemblies, make sure you can get to as everything that you possibly can, basically. Uh, and they have been primed. Now to save time, the base colour for the clothes is going to be a sort of khaki colour. So I've gone ahead and sprayed these with a, a khaki coloured primer. Uh, it's actually Citadel's Zandri Dust because it's reasonably close to the colours I'm going to use from the game colour range. Uh, that just saves two things. I could just prime them and then paint a base colour on but I may as well just prime them in a base colour. I don't mean like a normal paint, it's obviously a coloured primer. Uh, whenever you're painting a model, make sure you prime it, not just paint it first, because the primer grips to the surface. So these have had a dust coloured or a sand coloured primer, Zandri Dust, and that's just good to go now. So I don't need to physically paint a base coat on the fatigues, that's the word I was looking for. Don't need to paint a base colour on the fatigues, I can just go straight in with the rest of the painting. So I'll go and get everything ready, and we shall crack on. And the first thing we're going to paint, I think, 
uh, will be uh, the hands and skin, or the hands and face. Get the skin colour first, because I need to be able to work around them with some of the other paints. So we'll get the skin colour first. Now, I will tell you straight off, painting such tiny models is difficult. Um, filming such tiny models and keeping it in focus and interesting to watch is really hard because I've got to make sure the camera is near enough but I can also get in close to paint details so this may not be the best video ever there might be you know the camera might be here and I might knock it all the time or you might not see much I'll do my best but painting and filming painting figures is kind of really hard because I can't it's, it's all about access and distance so I'll do my best so don't expect you know excellent quality in this video I will do my best I'll go and get everything ready and we'll crack on okay so let's start off with the skin uh, now there are many different ways to paint skin but the way I like to do it uh, in my limited experience with painting skin is to start dark and work my way up to lighter colors so we're going to start off uh, the first color we're going to use is a Vallejo's cavalry brown which is 70982 uh, now I've mixed in little bits of whites and some reds just to vary up a little bit so it's not straight from the pot so I've got some on my brush and all I'm going to do is basically go in and paint in all the skin parts with this base colour now you don't need to be worried about being too neat at this stage you just want to get the thing covered because I used a rattle can primer I want to try and minimise how much of that I paint outside of the face and hands so if I can avoid, you don't need to be messy, if you've just used a normal colour, you can go ahead and paint all over the place. I'm being careful just because if I need to, I can correct any mistakes with my khaki colours. But I want to try and minimise that because it won't be an exact 100% match. So I just need to very carefully go in and get the, the main parts of the skin, so the head and the hands painted. Okay, that's all the fleshy bits done. Dif different bits on different figures. What's next? Next thing is the blue parts, because I'm going to give them blue armour. So we're going to be doing the helmets, the pauldrons, and the chest armour. Uh, and anybody with like things like the guy with the radio pack or this guy with the tanks, they'll also be in the blue base colour, just to match the vehicle. So for that, we're going to use steel grey, a Vallejo game colour steel grey. I have some of my wet palette. I shall apply some to the brush of brushing and we're just going to go ahead and get these painted up now with this uh, with this particular these paints they're beautiful paints to paint on get them a little bit thin with water always thin your paints a little bit with water and just gently apply them use a bigger brush than you think necessary this kind of brush is about the right size uh, and you may need more than one coat but because they do dry so fast by the time you finish painting all the bits you need to paint uh, you should be able to go over it with the second coat so just make sure you've got a nice even coat that covers everything. Oh, I'm doing the armour on the feet as well. So I'll go and get all these painted. Okay, so that's the blue painted on, the base coat of the blue. Now you might be wondering here, this on this shoulder, this is where I need to glue the other arm on. Why have I painted over that if I'm going to need to glue it? well before i did the priming what i did was i covered this shoulder in masking fluid so that when i finished all the painting i can just take the masking fluid off the plastic will be exposed there you see and i can glue the other arm on now i painted the whole thing because I, I can't remember exactly where the masking fluid is it's probably a small area in the middle so i decided i'll just paint over it i did the same on the arms as well uh in fact no i didn't do the same uh did i no i didn't do the same on the arms but here they're actually white glue or PVA glued onto the stick. So when I pull the stick out and the PVA glue comes away, there'll be exposed plastic just enough for me to have something to, for the glue to grip onto when I glue the arm on. So that's all the soldiers and things done. Uh, I'd, on the commander, I just did a little blue strip on his pointy hat. And on the sniper sniper, I did his cloak as well. And also the, the casing around his rifle. Now it's not all going to be blue, but I just painted the whole thing anyway. So that's that bit done. Uh, on the Vox guy, I painted the Vox on the back blue as well. What's next? Next, let's do the leather. Let's do the, the belts and the pouches and the boots and things and that. Uh, and for this, we're going to use Vallejo Game Colour Beastie Brown. I love the name, Beastie Brown. Uh, it's kind of a light colour, you'll see in a second. And all we're going to do is we're going to paint this onto the belts, the uh, straps, the pouches... 
uh, and the boots as well. So we're just going to go ahead and get these painted on. Now this is quite a thin paint, so this will require more than one coat. These all have anyway. And as always, a little bit of water just to thin it, just so that it flows nicely off the brush. That's the trick. Never go with paint straight from the bottle or from the pot, because that's where you run into problems with brush marks. So always add a little bit of water just to thin it down and then what you can do is because we're using a reasonably large brush not a tiny little detail brush the brush will hold a lot of paint in the bristles as a reservoir and you can almost not touch the brush to it because it's thin enough it'll just sort of flow from the tip of the brush onto the model so I'll get all these painted up okay so that's the leathers done all looking pretty good uh, what's next? Next we're going to start on the metallics uh, and the first ones we're going to do are the things like belt buckles, this guy's arm, little buttons and things on packs, stuff like that. We're not going to do guns or this sword blade yet, we're going to use different colours for those. Uh, but for these basic parts we're going to use uh, Vallejo Game Colour Chainmail Silver. So we're going to get some on the brush, a little bit of water. And we're just going to go ahead and start painting these up as I knock the camera. Yes, of course I do. So this is going to be things like his arm, uh, maybe the haft, the, the, the hand guard thing of the sword, power sword, but not the actual blade because I'm going to use a different colour for that. And I'm knocking the camera again. Yay! I love knocking the camera. You know I do. Okay, so that's the metallics painted, got his arm done and the, the hand guard or finger guard, whatever you want to call it. Uh, did some other bits and bobs, did lots of the headsets on the characters. Uh, on the sniper I did the visor around his eyes, just as a base coat for that, we've got other colours to come. And the guy with the vox caster, lots of little details picked out in that silver colour. So what's next? Next we want to get the sort of the bases for the, for the blah, 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 get my words out. We want to get the base battles for the guns done, and there's only two to do, really. Uh, there's the sniper rifle for the sniper dude, and there's the uh, this thing, which I think is a heavy flamer. I'm guessing it's a heavy flamer of some sort. It's, it goes on him, and he's got backpacks, so there you go. So we need to get this done. Uh, for this, we're going to use the Ammo by MIG Gun Metal, which is AMIG 045. We can use that particular colour, and it's dead straightforward. We're just going to get some on the brush. Uh, now I've got this on my wet palette, but I haven't added any water to it because the mid colours metallics are quite thin anyway. And it's just a case of painting this on, and you can see it's quite a nice, well, strangely enough, gunmetal colour. So we're going to get all these painted. We also need to paint the sniper rifle. So a tiny amount on the brush. Uh, I'm not going to paint the scope, just the metal parts of the the barrel. So we'll get these done. Okay, so that's all the gunmetal done on the heavy flamer. I think that's what that is. I'm going to guess it's a flamer because it's got like a flamethrower bit at the front, so it must be a heavy flamer. I also did the same on the sniper rifle. Painted the barrel and did a bit of the breech there, or whatever that part of the rifle is. Now, I've not been tidy around the scope at the top. It doesn't matter because I'm going to paint the scope a different colour, so I didn't worry about that. So that's been done. Painted the magazine as well. Uh, what's next? Next, we have more metallics. I've already got my little sort of water pot is full of metallic flakes. I may as well do all the metallics in one go. Uh, so what next? We want to do the blade on the power sword. And uh, there was something else I needed to do, but I've forgotten what it was. Anyway, we'll do the blade on the power sword. And for that, we're going to use the Vallejo Metal Colour Durable Moomin. Durable, 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 Durable I know it's a silly name, it's the uh, Duraluminium, it's 77.702. It's a beautifully thin, water-like paint that gives you a nice shiny finish. So all we're going to do is quite simply paint the blade on the power sword. Nothing really to explain here in any great detail. Might need a couple of coats, but probably won't.
Okay, so that's the blade painted. As you can see, it's lovely and gorgeous and shiny. If you haven't tried those metal colours from uh, from Vallejo, do give them a try. They're really, really nice colours. They go on really smooth. They don't dry lumpy or anything like that. And they don't even have much of a grain to them, so they are more than worth it. Once you've got some weathering and shades on there, it'll look even more spectacular. So give them a try if you've never tried them. Now, what's next? Next, we need to do all the little white details. So all the aquilas on the uniforms, on the weapons, uh, all the little markings, we need to get them done. We're going to do those in white. Um, for this, we're going to use Off-White by a Vallejo game colour Off-White, which is 72101. And it's quite simple to get ourselves a nice brush, get a brush with a, a nice big reservoir, so a, not a tiny brush. Make sure it's got a good point. Thin your paint a little bit and just get it on all the little details. Uh, now you might splodge around and make mistakes and that's fine because you can always go and touch up with the base colour, the blue later on, it's no problem. But just do your best to be as neat as possible. Go thin and do more than one coat. As you can see here I'm just using the very, very tip of the brush and I'm letting the paint, as before, because it's thinned, I'm letting the paint flow onto the model rather than pushing the brush around too much. But it will be patchy, so of course it will take more than one coat. So there's all the, the aquilas on the weapons that I'll need a second coat to sort of darken it up. Uh, there's also the aquilas on the uniforms and of course on the helmets as well. So I'll get all these done uh, as, uh, as the next step. Just take your time. Okay, so that's the white bits painted, the crests on the, show, on the uh, front, lots of shoulder pad details. Uh, and old bits and bobs. There was one bit I haven't painted. There's like a, a symbol on this guy's helmet, like an electric spark symbol. And also on the back of the, the Vox unit here. Haven't painted those because I tried and they're not really proud enough from the surface to paint easily. So I might wait till I've got a wash on there so I can see the edges of the bits I need to paint. But that's done. What is next? Next is some black or dark details. Now we're not actually gonna use black. We're going to use the uh, heavy charcoal uh, from Vallejo Game Colour. And we're going to paint things like the butt of this rifle, the scope. Uh, what else do we have? Some other bits and bobs on other figures. There's like little sort of pipes and tubes on this guy, like on his, uh, on his Vox unit, on his helmet, on the back there. Just little bits and bobs that need to be a dark colour. So I've got some heavy charcoal on my wet palette. And we're just going to paint these in. So let's get cracking. Might take a couple of coats of this because uh, I'm using it a little bit thin and I am using a small brush. So, yeah, I might take a couple of coats. Okay, so that's the dark grey or blacky sort of coloured bits painted. Just a few on some of the figures. Uh, what is next? Next, we want to do something with this cloak. Now I'm going to paint the inside of the cloak a different colour in a bit, but what I want to do on the outside, I want to make it like a reversible cloak, so on the out inside it's a green colour, so you can reverse it and hide in shrubbery. And on the outside, I'll go along with this kind of, it's not really winter camouflage, but this kind of blue camouflage scheme. As to why a blue camouflage scheme, nothing makes sense in Warhammer, don't worry about it. Anyway, what we're going to do, I've got the same colour that I used before, which was the uh, steel grey. And what I'm going to do, I've added some white to it. And what I'm going to do first of all, is just paint on basically some little squiggles just randomly. Just to give a kind of camouflage texture. Now there's no real structure to these at all. It'll take me a couple of coats. So I'll have to go over them once I've done them. To pad them out a bit, but just get a rough shape around here for now. And that's the first step. Okay, so that's the lighter colour built up. Took a few coats, I just applied it slowly and carefully to get that kind of cloud effect. I don't really know, what, I'm just kind of making it up. I don't really know what I'm actually going for anything. I don't think I'm going for anything realistic. So that's that colour. Next up, we are going to go in with a touch of uh, Vallejo model colour, Field Blue. Uh, again, thinned it slightly. And all we're gonna do on this one is come in with a smaller brush. And we're just going to add some squiggles, some smaller squiggles just here and there on the outer edges of the bigger squiggles just to break it up a bit this is a bit more fiddly this now a bit more precise so i'll crack on and get this done
Okay, so that's that camouflage pattern painted. Now it's going to tone down a lot and fade a little bit when we get the weathering on there and the shades and stuff, but that's fine. We just want it to be obvious that there is a camouflage pattern there. I've also gone ahead and painted the inside. Now I didn't have a green colour for this with Vallejo Game Colour, so I had to go ahead and use a Citadel paint, so I used Death World Forest. I just need to paint inside the hood there a little bit, so I'll do that in a moment. But what is the next step? Well, there's only really one thing left to paint, and that is some goldy, goldy, goldy trim. Uh, and what we're going to do with the goldy trim is we have a little skull on this dude's cyborg arm, which I'm going to do in gold. And I decided to do the skulls on the back of these fuel tanks for the flamer, the heavy flamer, in gold as well. And for this, we're just going to use, going to use uh, what we're going to use. We're going to use Vallejo Game Color, glorious gold. So I've got some on the palette of palettings, and we just need to get this on there. So let's do that. Okay, so that's the gold done. You can see there, I've got it on the back of the fuel tanks. Now, I've got to tell you, got to be really honest with you, when I was painting all the Aquilas and Eagles and things, I really wish now I'd done them in gold, because painting in metallic colours, for some reason, t painting tiny raised details is much easier if you're using, like, metallic colours than it is using things like white. White is a horrible colour to paint with anyway, and it took me a long time to do all these white details, just because I had to build up the colour and I had to keep tidying it up. This took me about five seconds because you just go and the paint just sticks to the edges. It's more like a, I don't know why, but metallic paint, especially golds and silvers, tend to be more like, I don't know, they just seem to stick to edges better and be more well behaved on the brush. So yes, that's done. And on the other part as well, I painted gold. Uh, I lied to you a little bit. There are two things left we need to paint and get a base colour on. We've got to do his bandage and the bandage on the Voxcaster guy. There you see. And also we have the braiding on the commander, the braiding on his arm. So for the bandages, what we're going to do, I've got the Vallejo Game Color khaki that I used earlier on. Uh, I've mixed a little bit of white into that. And it may seem strange to start a bandage with a sort of pale sandy white color, pale sandy khaki color, but it'll make sense later on. Trust me on this. So I'm just going to go ahead and get all these bandages painted up so far. You can see it's a bit lighter than the, the color we've already got. So we'll get these bits done first. Okay, now for the braiding on the commander, we're going to go for, uh, we're going to use a MIG colour for this, because I didn't get a yellow in the Vallejo game colour, so we're going to use MIG, strangely enough, ammo by MIG, yellow. Now, again, like before, yellow, it's a horrible colour to paint with, it's, ooh, not in the camera, sorry. It's as bad as white, or sometimes even worse. So this is going to take a number of coats. Now, this isn't thinned at all, because MIG colours are quite thin, so it's just on the wet palette, but it's not thinned. So we'll go ahead and get all this braiding on his arm painted up. Apologies for the... Oh, I'm locking the camera every five seconds. Apologies for the... I told you this video would be all out of focus and badly lit and poor camera angles. It's the downside of painting little figures. Okay, so that's all the base colours done. Uh, so now it's time to put on some shading. Now we're going to use a number of different shades and inks and things. For most of the outfit, we're going to use the uh, Game Color Wash Sepia Shade, which we're going to apply to everything except the silvers and the leathers, because they'll have a different shade. Uh, and this is fairly straightforward. We're just going to apply this straight on. So let me get some on the brush. And we'll go ahead and do that. Now I might get some on the silvers. It's not the end of the world. But the trick is to get this stuff on and then move it around so it's not pooling up in any one particular place. That's the trick. So just keep moving it around until it goes into all the recesses. Okay, so that's the Agrax Earthshade all dried and nicely. As you can see, it's darkened everything down and it's collected in the recesses. Now, before we go ahead and do any other shades, I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit now. Uh, I'm going to bring back some of the lightness to the uh, uniform. Uh, and what we're going to do for that is we're going to go back to the original khaki colour that we used just to bring back the light areas and leave shade in the recesses because basically it's darkened it down. And that's fine. You could leave it like that if you want to look, you know, have a particularly battle hardened look. 
but I'm going to bring it back a little bit. So I'm going to go back to my original khaki colour that we used for the base. Uh, well, actually, what I've done is I've used, let's have a look, it is uh, khaki, Vallejo Game Colour khaki, with little bits of white and yellow here and there added to make it as close to the Zandri Dust base coat that I put on. Because remember, I primed it with Zandri Dust Primer from Citadel. So I've kind of had to mix a bit of the Game Colour khaki with some other colours just to get it about right. And it's pretty close. And all we're going to do is take a very fine brush and essentially paint back over where we've just done all the shading, but avoid all the recesses where the shade is collected. So you've got to be try and be neat now, careful as you can, and just try and make it look a bit more lively. So I shall go and do this, and it will take me a while because I have to go quite slowly. You want to make sure your paint is a little thinner than normal. But again, just avoid the recesses. It may look a bit clunky, but don't worry, it'll all come out good. Okay, so that's that layer of layering done. Now, I will be honest, I don't quite know why I did that, because it's not actually what, it's not what that stage was supposed to be. We're not ready to do that yet, so I don't quite know why I went ahead and did that. I don't know. Special, what can I say? Uh, the next step, we've still got more sort of shading to do, more washes. Uh, and the next step is to shade uh, the leather to the boots and the belts and the straps and the holsters and pouches and things. Uh, all the metallics, so the silvers and the gun metals, uh, and anything that was painted with the dark charcoal, the heavy charcoal, whatever it's called. What's it called? I can't remember now. It's called heavy charcoal. I knew it was like I knew it was that. Um, anything that's like that sort of dark colour here, we've got the rubber bit on the antenna, just so we can get it into the recesses and make them look a bit darker and just less flat grey. And what we're going to use for this is the Vallejo Game Ink Black. Now. If you've never used an ink before, uh, this is basically an equivalent to Norm Oil. Instead of using Citadel paints, it's like using Norm Oil. Um, the difference with inks is, inks tend to have very intense colours. So you can apply them neat, but they will kind of darken everything intensely, and it'll just make that mess of everything. So ideally you need to thin them down. Now you can thin them down with a number of different things. You can thin them with water, although as we've said before, when you thin acrylics with water, it can bake, break down the acrylic binders in the in the fluid that helps the pigment flow properly and helps the colour be uniform and keeps the surface tension. So water's fine, but it's not the best. Um, one of the best things to use is the Pledge Floor Care Finish, two times more shine, two times more shine, or you may know it as Pledge Multi-Surface Wax or Pledge something else. They've got a million different names. An acrylic gloss varnish sometimes helps. Uh, you can use um, uh, acrylic mediums, so uh, basically paints or, or in Citadel's case, a shade without any pigment in. They're just clear and they dry the matte or gloss. Just something that can thin the ink without necessarily diluting it. You want to thin it but not dilute it. So something that is clear yet also acrylic is the best thing to use. Now I'm not going to use any pledge. Uh, I'm going to use, I am actually going to use Citadel's Lamian Medium. I haven't got any of the Vallejo uh, matte medium, but you can get matte mediums and so on from Vallejo. And they're just paints or uh, similar without any pigment in. They're just clear and they're usually matte or gloss. And inks themselves as well, by the way, tend to dry glossy. So if you want them to be matte, you can mix them with the matte. But it doesn't really matter at this stage because we are going to matte this down at the end anyway. So what do we do? Dead easy. Get some of the uh, get some of the ink. I'll just give it a good shake. So I'm going to put it on my palette. I've got a little blob of water on my palette ready. I'm, uh, water. Lamian medium. Again, as I said, e models don't sell Citadel stuff yet. You never know. Uh, but Vallejo do do their own matte mediums, uh, clear mediums. And all we're going to do is quite simply brush this stuff over. So all the all the brown things like the boots. And you can kind of be handy with it. I'll just move it over there because I'm going to get my elbow in it. Uh, you can be kind of handy with it. You don't have to worry too much. It will do exactly like the wash we did earlier on. Uh, the sepia wash. It'll just collect in the recesses, but it will also tint the thing it's brushed onto. Uh, if you want to make things darker, these will kind of dry a dark brown with sort of almost black recesses. If you want to make them darker still, you can do a second coat. Uh, and we're just going to get these over all the metallics and all the brown leathers. You want to let it collect in the recesses like before, like around that sort of button there. But you don't want it to pull up too much, so do just keep moving it around. Same as with the the um, the sepia, the wash. So 
I shall just get this done. And you can say you can be a little bit careless. You don't be too careful. Yes, it's going over the well, I'm going over the belt here. It's collecting around the edge of the belt onto the bit that was khaki. But that's fine. It just gives a kind of shadow. Okay, so that's the black wash layer done. Still drying a little bit, but as you can see, it's brought out some of the details, especially on that little speaker there on the Voxcaster. Really cool the hair on the end of my finger. Really quite nicely. And that's what it's meant to do. It's meant to just pick out the details uh, at this stage so we can see them a bit more clearly. Uh, now, there's one last shade to do, uh, and that is to shade the flesh. Now, I did say in the first episode, I think, that uh, there is a small number of Citadel paints that I'm going to have to use. Uh, on these builds um, and for this I'm going to use Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm using on the flesh colours from now on I'm going to use the Citadel paints purely because I'm really used to them and I know exactly how to use them uh, and when it comes to painting faces and things yeah, I don't really want to start using new paints and hope and risk them looking a bit pap because I'm not familiar with those paints so I'm going to stick to the from now on for the Citadel paint so we're going to go some Reichland Flesh Shade which is just a it's a bit like the sepia tone but it's a bit warmer and redder it's kind of that color if it helps kind of a more ready rosy tone which works really well for flesh uh, and all we're going to do for this is exactly the same as we did with the null oil get some on the magic brush a brush and we're just going to quite simply splop this in to the skin areas now we're not going to be too generous we're not going to like slop it all over the place as we knock the camera we're not going to slop it everywhere, but we do want it to collect in the recesses. So we need to be a little bit generous, but not too crazy. We don't want to be absolutely mad with it. So there we go, that'll do nicely. And then we'll get some on the flesh here as well. So I need to go around and do all the fleshy bits on all these figures. And then we can move on to the rest of the layer painting, which for some reason we started earlier, and I don't quite know why. Because I'm special. Okay, so that's all the washes now done. Uh, and as you can see, it just gives the whole figure a lot more depth and realism, which is kind of cool. Now, uh, off camera, I did go ahead and finish off the skin uh, because it was real close up work and it's not something I can film me doing because I have to get really close and use a very fine brush. So unfortunately, I couldn't film that. Uh, but the, for those of you who wanted to know, uh, I went over with some Cadian Flesh Tone and then some Kislev Flesh, both at Citadel Colours. Uh, just to bring out the highlights and the raised areas whilst leaving the, the shaded areas in the recesses. And the teeth were just given a very quick touch of Ushab no, not Ushab Bone, Screaming Skull, Screaming Skull, another Citadel paint. So that's that done. So all the faces have been painted. So what's next for us? Well, next we want to do something to just lighten up this, the khaki coloured um, fatigues. Uh, and for this, we're going to go back to the same khaki colour we've been using all along. But I've added a bit more white to it this time, a bit more than we had last time. And quite simply, all we're going to do is very similar to the, what we did uh, uh, earlier on when we put the khaki colour over the washed paint. What we're going to do this time is go over again, but try and restrict it more to the raised areas. So things like this here, where you've got this pocket raised bits here and there now what we've done is what i want what's a we all the time it's like the royal we what i've done is i've thinned it down a bit more than normal uh, and i'm building up slowly so i'm just going over the raised areas like the tops of these creases and the idea is that the first coat won't be that bright it will make it a little bit brighter but again we're keeping the shade in the recesses and if i need it to be any brighter than that i can then go over with more of the same paint again thin more than normal just to build up that sort of lighter patch and this is just really a way to get some highlights and as i knock the camera what i will try and do as well is especially on things like sleeves try and restrict it to the tops of the sleeves which is where you would naturally get a highlight from the light above so i'll try and restrict it to the tops of sleeves if i can so it's quite painstaking work so i'll go ahead and get this done and when we come back we'll move on to the next step it's not very exciting to watch me do this because there's not a lot I can show you. It's quite fiddly and I have to get really close. Oh, locking the camera. Sorry. OK, 
okay and that's the fatigues now looking a bit better a bit more defined and three-dimensional uh, there's still more work to do on those but we'll get to that later next is to go back to the blues the armors and what we're going to do here is pretty much the same thing we're going to repaint over the blue armor but just leaving the shade in the recess so i've gone back to the steel blue that we started off with and we're just going to slowly work our way oops a bit too thin let's make that a little bit thicker slowly work our way over the armor okay so that's the blue armor brought back now there's only a few more steps to do before we're done uh, first of all we need to do something with these bandages so what i've done is i've taken some of the white and mixed in a little bit of our khaki color what i'm going to do is just very gently and very carefully oops knock the camera of course i am uh, just start to pick out some of these bandages but i'm going to try and leave if i can the shade and the darkness in the recesses and just work on the highlight areas so that the bits between the little grooves and this is just to build this out now, i'm not going to paint the whole thing i'm just going to work really at the tops just to suggest where the light would hit so we've still got the slightly darker shade down below it's quite tricky okay so that's the bandages done on both the figures who have the bandages to play with um, not really much left to do now one thing we're going to do now is we're going to do something with these khaki fatigues i just want to make them blend i mean they look good as they are i just want to add a bit of a tint to them just to make them blend with the blue armor a bit more maybe reduce some of the highlights and low lights reduce the contrast and what i'm going to do for that is i'm going to do something a bit unusual i'm going to try and make a glaze but i'm going to use the ammo by mig crystal light blue which is quite thick and gloopy and i've mixed in some lamian medium citadel lamian medium which like i said before is just a clear paint without any color it's matte now you, if you can't get that one you can use obviously vallejo have got their own uh matte mediums and other mediums are available and all i've done is i've mixed some of the blue into the medium so it's reasonably thin you'll see it looks a bit like that uh, it's quite thin and all i'm going to do is basically apply this uh as a really is a filter it's, it's technically a glaze but i'm really going to do it as a filter and what i want it to do is not change the color necessarily but just cool the color and add a slight blue tint and this will just help reduce any excessive highlights any sort of highlight areas but also kind of blend it in with the rest of it which has a blue color to it anyway so i'm just going to go around all the khaki uniforms uh, and get this on shouldn't take me too long okay last step now uh, now if i was going to make these as tabletop miniatures that was going to play in a game the next step will be to matte varnish everything and then do any sort of metallic highlights or gloss varnish everything and then matte it down with a matte medium and leave any glossy bits glossy but i'm not going to play these on a tabletop these are going to be in a display case they're not ever going to be touched so i don't need to worry about matte varnishing these models you don't have to matte varnish a model unless it's going to be handled at some point or it's an effect you want to create so what's the next step well we just want to bring a little bit of zing back to the metallics because you can see they've got a little bit of shine to them but not much because of all the the washes we've put over them so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the uh, uh vallejo metal color 77702 durable moomin and we're going to dry brush it sort of dry brush it so we're going to get some on this little bit of wood here like liquid mercury this stuff i love it and we're going to take instead of a dry brush we're going to take a small brush we're going to get some on the brush and then we're going to take most of it off on the tissue so it's sort of a dry brush but not quite and then we're just going to really sort of pick out the edges as best we can very lightly now you could just do this as a dry brush with a dry brush brush but it's a bit big and overbearing and you'll probably end up covering loads of other stuff and I just want this to be subtle and dry brushing does leave a certain graininess sometimes and this color is a beautifully smooth color so I just need to really very subtly pick at edges pick at raised areas just get a hint now what I'm going to do on this bit here the flamer is actually really focus it on this outer bit a bit more so I can get some shine to it just so it looks like it's a different color than the rest of the gun hang on let's get some more on the tissue and take it off 
So it's like a dry brush, you're just using a small pointy brush, if I can do this so you can see it, using a small pointy brush rather than a normal dry brush, sort of flat chisel brush, just to get more subtlety. And as the spinny thing comes out, and there's no doubt you can hear next door's got a bouncy castle going in the garden for their son's birthday. I'm so tempted to run over and dive on it, but I can't. I'm 46. I can't do that. <laughs> uh, yes, we are done. Figures are complete. Uh, I've had a real great time painting these. Uh, there's still a couple of little things left to do. The turn around here now, but the tank commander and or the vehicle commander and the gunner at the back there i'll still need to do something at the bottom of those figures his feet and the bottom of his legs just to sort of give them a little bit of shadow once they go into the vehicle so they're not just plonked in there and you can see where the figure stops so what i'll probably do is once they're in there i'm ready to glue them in i'll start thinking about that but right now i don't want to do that because i don't know you know they might naturally go into shadow anyway or you might not be able to see the bottom of the feet so it might not need to be done so we'll figure that out later on when we're sticking them in but I've really enjoyed painting these figures. Uh, hopefully in this program, I've showed you it's not hard to paint figures. It takes a little bit of skill in terms of painting tiny details, but there's nothing stopping you. Painting a tiny, de tiny detail and then going back and cleaning it up because you've splodged paint in other places. It's just a process of going backwards and forwards and tidying up as you go along. Do make sure you've got some good brushes. That's the real trick. I do recommend the Army Painter brushes uh, that you can get at eModels now. They're, uh, they're really, really nice. Uh, do make sure you keep them clean and look after them though. Get yourself some brush soap. Uh, that's really good stuff. That helps your brushes last a bit longer and keep their points. But I've had great fun painting these. Like I say, I hope I've given you some ideas. It's not the best colour scheme in the world, but hey, it fits with the vehicle. It's actually not a bad colour scheme, actually. Uh, and I hope you can see as well, because I forgot to mention it in the last segment, how that blue sort of filter we did, that very thin glaze, has just tinted the khaki fatigues a little bit and just made them look a little bit colder. Shifted them away from the warm end of the colour spectrum, the warm browns and push them more towards the sort of blue end of the spectrum it's just very very subtle um just a very subtle tint just to make it blend with the blue of the armor a bit and hopefully as you can see on here it's helped fade together the low lights and the highlights it just helps them blend in a little bit it softens the highlights and makes them less bright uh, and kind of lightens the low lights a little tiny bit so it just helps everything blend together but that's going to do us for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Still to come, we've got to figure out, or rather I've got to figure out, as in I've got to actually work out what I'm going to do, a diorama for these and the vehicles. There's still a few little bits I need to do on the vehicle itself. I've got to sort out um, the hatch covers and the spotlight and the, the panniers on the side and stuff like that. I won't show painting the panniers on the side and the rucksacks because it's the same techniques that I used on these figures, um, just with the khaki colours. So I won't need to show that, um, but we will get that done. There's also some weathering to do on that, some dust and dirt that we'll need to do. But in the next episode, we will crack on with the diorama, I think. Or we might just get the vehicle finished. I'm not sure yet, whichever comes first just remains for me to say thank you so much for watching um as always don't forget this video is produced for and my, i am sponsored by emodels.co.uk your one-stop shop for all your model making needs do pop along to their website and check out what they've got they've got everything you need kits books tools paints brushes anything you want uh, they've got so much stuff go in there prepared to come out with a lot of stuff because there are a million things and as we always say if you haven't got it you don't need it and what we mean by that is if you can't find a very specific thing you're looking for don't panic i've just stabbed myself with my tweezers ow ow mm. stabby look grievous wound oh stabby stabby ow oh anyway yes uh, they, if you can't find what you're looking for don't worry they've either got something else just as good or if you need to find something very specific and you can't find it just drop them an email give them a call it's either just out of stock temporarily and they'll let you know when it's back in or more often than not if it's something that they they can get from one of the distributors they can get it for you anyway so if ever you can't find something just give them a shout they'll be happy to help you out but that's going to do us thank you so much for watching uh do take care of yourselves stay tuned for the next episode uh, and until next time go make something awesome go be awesome and if i can get my hand in here to wave without knocking them over Adios, amigos.